an area that is uh, absolutely uh, does not exist on our uh, radar, uh, not only in the American uh, media, uh, but also uh, in the Arab media, Yemen. Uh, I mean, there is an epidemic of cholera going on. There are uh, thousands of people dying every day. Uh, have you ever been to Yemen? Um, do you cover this story? Is anybody covering it? And why nobody is actually covering Yemen? Yeah, I, I wrote a piece last year on Yemen. Um, I think that the title of that piece was um, The American-led Catastrophe in Yemen. I mean, we're, we're basically being providing Saudi Arabia with the weaponry and the bombs and also um, the satellite imagery uh, to carry out their savagery in Yemen. I mean, you've got the, the, the wealthiest country in the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, carrying out a, a violent war against the poorest country in the Middle East. And we, we have a humanitarian catastrophe the likes, you know, we haven't seen in a very, very long time. We have 23 million people in that country which are in dire need of urgent humanitarian assistance now. We have outbreaks of cholera. Uh, we have one in three children who are malnourished um, in that country all the while. You know, and then since Trump has come into office, you know, the, the, the bombing has, you know, uh, increased dramatically. Um, and, you know, with no, no end in sight. So, um, you know, and again, but, you know, you very rarely see any coverage uh, of Yemen. I mean, on CNN, uh, in either the, the mainstream newspapers or mainstream cable news networks, it really is the forgotten war. Uh, but worse, it's a war which has our name on it. And, you know, that's what I keep telling my uh, friends in the U.S., that um, in, on social media we see the bodies, we see reports. I mean, there are some independent uh, journalism in the Arab world, and they do cover these things. But when it comes to Iraq, when it comes uh, to Syria, there is only the whatever pro-Western policy and foreign policy there, but the rest of the people do see the bodies and do see the effects of our failed foreign policy in the region, and it angers them. But they always go back to uh, Quran and they go back to Islam, because I think, I have a feeling because it's easier. Uh, it's a black and white explanation. Do you agree with me? It's, it's yeah. just... Yeah, exactly. It's not only easier, but it's, it absolves us of any responsibility and absolves us of any guilt, and also allows us uh, to not have to um, to, uh, to to self-examine our own role in this cycle of violence. So, I mean, l under Obama last year, um, we bombed a, a wedding uh, in Yemen, killing 149 people, and most of the victims were women and children. Now, think of it about the radicalizing effect that had on the families and the friends of those people killed in that attack. Then take that out further of the community, of the city um, uh, of that attack, who had to not only see the bodies, but that they actually do get the media coverage of the, the violence that we carried out. But then if a Yemeni person who was related or by extension would radicalize himself, for lack of a better term, because he witnessed it or watched clips of it on the internet, and then if he walk, walked into a, a uh, you know, a shopping mall or whatever and, and shot several people, we would, we would totally ignore all the events that had led to his life carrying out that attack that, you know, there's people who've been blown away in front of him. And we go, oh, look, he's a, a Muslim, he's an Arab, he must be, you know, um, you know a violent, barbaric, and must be dealt with. So, you know, it's, it's, a very, it's not only a lazy shortcut, but it, it's a value of uh, absolving our own sins. Do you see that there is any difference between uh, Bush or Obama or Trump or or even uh, Clinton, uh, not Hillary, of course, but Bill uh, Clinton, when it comes to U.S. foreign policy? I mean, it never changes, CJ, and it's so no. obvious. It's just throwing and destroying that part of the world, and it's, 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 it's just creating more terrorists everywhere. I do not see yeah. any difference, personally. No, there's there's, there's really been no difference between, from a, a foreign policy point of view, when you look at the war on terror, I mean, there's been no difference between Bush, Obama, or Trump. I mean, uh, Bush, I mean, certainly, you know, uh, has set the path for light to where we are today. I mean, uh, with two invasions of, uh, of foreign countries and two invasions and occupations. Uh, but then with Bush, you had then all the human rights violations which came in and you had the, you know, the, the CIA torture program uh, but under Obama, Obama basically took Bush's war on terror 
and just reduce the military footprint. So instead of having large scale invasions, um, he now uses a, rather than use a hammer, he's using a scalpel. So he, uh, his drone wars, he stepped up the drone wars in uh, these tribal areas of Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Yemen, and Somalia, um, Syria. I mean, Obama dropped 21,000 bombs on the Middle East in 2016 uh, alone. But he put a legal framework around Bush's framework. What Bush had made illegal, Obama just took it, changed the laws, made it legal, made a few you know cosmetic changes here. But what he did was he he uh, launched a program of killing in the Middle East, which wouldn't get much media play back home. So when you're using drone strikes and these signature strikes, and you're using special forces which are dropped into these areas in the middle of the night. Um, you know, it, it very gun is very little uh, immediate attention, and a lot of these operations remain classified. So, um, you know, it's a very secret war, a covert war that takes place. Are you want Trump, to, sorry, CJ, but yeah. uh, you said 21,000 uh, bombs on the Middle East in one year. That's right, that's Obama. That's Obama that the, people who on the left. Peace Prize. Yes, and on people on the left think he, is, he was a, a very peaceful man. Oh, exactly. I mean, it won't be long before Obama is remembered as Jesus. Um, in the United States, and and uh, and, and Trump is helping is helping that uh, helping that narrative move along. But um, I mean, Obama is I mean, Obama, you know, Yemen is his catastrophe. I mean, Obama decided to give Saudi Arabia the largest weapons package in U.S. Saudi relations history. Um, you know, to the tune of eighty billion dollars. So it was Obama that gave Saudi Arabia to drop the bombs on in Yemen. It was Obama that dropped bombs all over the Middle East. It was Obama who ramped up the drone war. Also via the drones that nobody sees or, you know, there is not much coverage or photo images or any of that. Drones. Yeah, no, exactly. Did you hear about uh, um, Eric Prince suggesting uh, using his uh, um, mercenaries, he refuses to call them that, and he will take care of Afghanistan? Did you hear uh, anything about Eric Prince? He was the founder of Blackwater. I think they changed its name. I can't remember the new name of it. But he is suggesting uh, to play and uh, handle uh, Afghanistan once and for all. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is what this is what happened. I mean, Eric Prince, you know, he's a director of Blackwater, which, as you quite rightly pointed out, was a mercenary organization uh, which committed atrocities in Iraq uh, during the U.S. occupation. There, um, he now, uh, you know, sees a close friend of Steve Bannon, who's you know the the, the closest aide to Trump. Um, but this is this is this is this had, this uh, movement has been happening. Uh, for basically more than the last decade, where we're, we're outsourcing uh, military to private corporations. Um, if you look at Afghanistan, it, at one point in Afghanistan, there was something like 60, I might have the number wrong, was either 40 or 60 percent of all US personnel in that country at the height of the occupation were private contractors. Oh. Um, now, that's going to, by the, in the next war, in the next decade, you get, it's going to be 80% of the personnel on the ground are employed by private contracts, only 20% by the, the military. So when you outsource the military to private contractors, what you're doing is these private corporations are driven by profit. So these private corporations are going to look for excuses and opportunities to carry out more wars in more countries. And when you do this, wars are going to be sold as new products to the American people. Oh God! And there is no accountability because the army and the military they are uh, bound by the Geneva Convention and all the laws of how to deal with occupied lands and occupied people. Isn't that right, uh, CJ? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's a, it's a very dangerous path we're going down. We're going to have private soldiers roaming the world, um, private corporation soldiers roaming the world.